friends. So coming to you Thursday evening, and I'm pre-recording this for our Friday morning session, because I promised you all week long that I would do a video at 11 a.m. each morning during winter break to go over some of the ideas that we have in the studio for art at home. So as we know, not everybody can make it down here over your winter vacation. So we put together kind of a compilation of some of our favorite projects that you can do with materials you just have laying around your house. And the one I have for you today is an oldie but a goodie. If you follow our Instagram or our Facebook page for the past couple years, you have seen this because it is one of our all-time favorites. This is griddle art. Um, so I've got here just a plain old griddle, um, just flat top, and it is turned on low. My, this one here, I've got a couple in the studio, but this one doesn't have a temperature setting. It just has um, a dial setting with numbers, so it is set somewhere between numbers two and three. Um, the ones that have temperature settings usually will ride around like the 175 to 200 range. Um, you may have to play with it just a little bit. Now, mine are obviously art griddles. It honestly used to make pancakes, and then I kind of took it for the art studio, and then we've collected others. But um, if you're using the one at home that you also like to cook bacon on in the morning, um, you're going to want to do a really, really good job of covering it with aluminum foil. I am also going to cover mine with aluminum foil only because it makes my cleanup easier, um, especially if you've got, we've got usually multiple children who are going to be using this. Now, if I, this was my home griddle, I would leave it cool and I would wrap it really good and seal the edges and make sure everything was completely covered so that way I didn't get wax anywhere on my griddle. Since this is... Um, this is not the case for ours. This is our art griddle. I'm not going to worry too much about it. Um, I'm going to show you two different ways to use this griddle. Now, we do this in, even in my young classes, okay? And I understand that there's some safety concerns here. You can get around it by making sure you have a very, very low temp, and then, of course, by supervising your kiddos. Um, the biggest... Uh, probable injury that you will have is someone who rests their hand on the griddle when they're drawing, which you don't want to do. So when we have little kids that are actually exploring this kind of um, process art, it's, it's not uncommon that I would sit next to a small child and have my hand underneath theirs, just to make sure they don't rest it down. Um, and then once they get used to it, usually just a verbal cue of hands high will remind them that they need to keep their hands off the griddle and their, and their arm off the edge of the griddle as well. Okay. Other than that, the only thing you're going to need besides the griddle and the foil is a bunch of crayons. And I've got a giant, a giant bucket of crayons here. Yeah, um, this is a great use for old crayons, crayons that have been, you know, like peeled. So uh, because it actually works better if the paper is not on them. We have found that some brands do better than others, but uh, there's no telling which one's going to work the best until you actually get around to doing it. So. Um, you want to teach your kids to hold high on the crayon as well. Once they get down to the little nubbies, they're going to want to back their hands up or use a longer crayon. You can color directly on the foil, which is what I'm going to show first, and then um, you can also go onto the paper. So uh, we teach them to color slowly. You can see how as I move the crayon around on the foil, it leaves a trail of melted wax. This one's actually melting pretty darn good. If you see it starts to smoke, it means that your temperature is too high and you need to um, reduce it. So let's see what this one does. It's almost like painting with, with wax as you, because the colors will blend together and you can go over the top of them. Let's see, here's another one. You can hear it start to kind of sizzle. I love using the light colors on here and going right over dark colors because that's not something you could normally do with, with crayon, uh, but when it's melted, you can. Let's see, this one here, let's see if the white works. Sometimes you can get a white one to go on it. This is extremely relaxing for you adults who, who want to do an art project. Super fun. Ooh, ooh, here's a light green. That's a good time. And I like to do just a just an abstract drawing. You're going to have some kids that really want to do uh, something concrete, and that's cool, but I think just abstract swirls and kind of an organic shape is the most fun to draw. Um, you can go straight on this foil, and if you pull it off here, it's going to cool down, um, and, and that can be your artwork. You can also, I'll show you here in just a second, 
we can use this paper that's sitting here. Sorry, I have to find like the perfect color here to, to finish out my artwork. This is the problem of having an artist do your tutorials. All right, we're gonna put a little orange in there, right through the middle. And then all the way around the outside, we're gonna go with orange. All right, so we can use the paper that we have laying here on the table, and it's just regular drawing paper. Typing paper works too. Um, and we can make a print, okay? So this, is, this might be a grown up job if you've got young kiddos, but it's gonna go down on there. And you can actually place, I'm using my hands, but you could take a dish towel and set it right on top and give it a little bit of a rub. This always works just fine for me, as long as I move my hands pretty quick. And the whole thing comes off. So we grab this foil, off it comes. And then, see if I can show it to you what it looks like when I peel it away, it's gonna pull that color off with it. And we've got this print. Um, the wax, as it cools, you can see it's still a little bit shiny, but it's gonna cool here in just a second. Um, cool to the touch, and then it's not gonna come off, just like, just like you colored something um, with a crayon. So, if you want to, you don't have to go on the foil. You can actually draw directly onto the paper. I'm gonna recover just for a second. Make sure I protect my griddle. Make my cleanup easy. I'm gonna put my paper this time on top of my foil. And now I can draw, again, get the crayon melted. A lot of times the kids, they don't realize they have to kind of get it going. Um, if you lay it down and you immediately start drawing, so I'm gonna use a cold crayon here. All right, and the first thing you do is, I don't even know if I can do it, that. It doesn't, you don't get any sort of melting going on. So we have to teach them to go slowly, get the crayon kind of, usually we say see it make a puddle first. And as it makes a puddle, then you can go ahead and, and start to move it across the page. But slow is the name of the game here because we wanted to actually make that kind of juicy, juicy paint product. color right next to it. It really is a lot like you're painting with a crayon. It's a very satisfying way to paint with crayon, or to color with crayon, because normally crayon is something that takes a, a decent amount of effort to, to lay on a, a thick and smooth coat, but when you are doing it this way, it actually goes on pretty smooth. I'll find a good color here. There's so many to choose from. Oops, that's not crayon, that's a pencil. Where's the purple? I don't want you guys to hang around and watch me feel it though. We'll go with blue. Alright, and then this is uh, actually kind of fun because when you finish this and you flip it over, if you cover the entire page here, um, the back of your drawing will actually look like you just drew a picture on wax paper because, um, because this, this wax from the crayons has seeped all the way through the paper and it, and it almost makes, if you can see the light coming through that, it almost makes it like a sun catcher kind of look to it. They're fun that, to hang in the windows after you finish this. All the way around this one. I could do this for hours. This is, this is therapeutic for adults. You guys should try this. Over winter break, if the kids are stressing you out, what you need to do. And you get out the pancake griddle and all the old crayons and just go to town. Ooh, that's a pretty color. Look at that. That's like a, that's like a teal. With the, the paper here, I didn't have this issue, but 
Uh, sometimes you have to turn the temp up a little bit more than when you're just coloring on the foil, um, just because the heat doesn't, doesn't go through the two layers uh, quite as easily. So if, if you're noticing that your crayons are not melting, then you need to, to turn them up. Now the alternative to this, say you don't want to use your pink paper, or maybe you don't have a pink paper, or you don't feel comfortable with the kids um, doing this art because uh, they're young and you're worried they're going to burn themselves. There are um, a couple other, it's still hot, there's still potential to burn, but maybe a little bit um, more alternatives that you'll be more comfortable with. One is to use an old plate. So if you have a, um, oh, like a, a corningware type plate that you've got that's you don't mind ruining because it's, it's not going to, it's not ever going to be the same. But um, you can heat that up with just warm um, tap water, right? So get it, get it nice and warm, run it under the tap water, and then dry it off. While it is still warm, you can color right on the plate. And obviously, as it cools, it becomes less effective. But, um, but that is, that's another way to do this, so that way it's maybe not quite as high a temperature. Um, another thing that we've done is we went to the Dollar Tree and purchased, um, you know, little like river rocks. And um, I think there's some pictures actually on our Facebook page. Uh, if, you, if you go back maybe a year or two, or if you just search um, painted rocks, we've, um, we've taken the rocks and put them in the oven before. It doesn't take long for them to heat up. And then uh, when they're nice and warm, you can put them on a, a paper plate and then take your crayon and set it right on top of the rock. And the, the wax will just pour right over the top. And then you grab a different color and do the same thing. And you get these poured layers of, of color that go over the top of a rock until it's almost completely encased in, in the wax. And as the rock cools, that wax then hardens um, around the rock and, and then your project is over. So again, the, the painting process for those two examples lasts only as long as your item, whether it's your plate or it's your rock, only as long as that item retains heat. So as soon as it cools down, um, kind of the, the, the painting part is is no more, but unlike this one where I could do this all day and you guys are probably tired of watching me. Alright, so when you're done with this, again, the whole thing comes off, alright, and I'll show you kind of what the back looks like. Uh, it will cool really fast right now, it's, it's all shiny, but um, by the time I walk up next to this camera and show it to you, it's going to be completely cooled off. Let me show you. If I get up here nice and close, and you can see see how my my drawing looks. So, and then this is the back of it. Looks like wax paper there on the back, and then on the front. And the kids will say it dries so quick, so quickly, and and you can say, well, it's it's not really drying as much as it's it's cooling and, and it, it's solidifying. It, it hits a liquid at a certain temp, and then them back to a solid. So I hope that you have fun with this one. This is one of our all-time favorites. So enjoy.